What's up you guys? It's the Donna. Welcome back to my channel. So I wanted to give you guys like just a little bit of light breezy news um, because I know we've all been dealing with like the drama of political stuff for the past week. So I wanted to come on here and talk to you all about how I've been doing. Just give you a quick update about me being a PA over these last I would say eight months now. I've been working as a PA for eight months and I've actually been, like I was hired at nine months. So if you have any questions or comments for me, please leave them in the comment section below. Uh, I do look at your comments, you guys, so please do that because I get info for other videos from those comments. And also like this video, I know you're gonna like it, and subscribe. All right, so with that being said, I've been a PA for about eight months now. Well, no, I've been a PA for almost a year but I've been working as a PA for about eight months now. So um, it's actually, it's it's cool, you guys. You know, it's interesting. Um, I'm getting a lot more comfortable uh, seeing, you know, the consults and stuff because I don't know if you, you know how my job works, but I am a trauma PA. And so being a trauma PA, what happens is that there are typically three of us on at a time and then there'll be two people on the floor, one person in the trauma, bay and some of the, like the people on the floor will take consults. The people in the trauma bay also takes consults, but it's typically like trauma related consults. So let's say somebody came in with like a wound to their leg and it's like a really, really bad gash or something like that, you know, that may need to go to the OR to be washed out. They would do a trauma consult and then the one who's in the trauma bay will go and see the patient to see if it should be upgraded to a level two trauma or if it's something that the general like main side ED can handle. So when it comes to consults, you it's your your it's what you learn in PA school, right? You have to go and you do your HPI and you get all of this information from the patient, like, hey, when did this thing happen? You know, um, what were you doing? How long has the pain been? If it's something pain related, or how long has this bulge been there? If it's like a hernia or something like that, um, and you just kind of go through the motions. And so I've been getting really like used to that. I wouldn't necessarily say like, I'm, oh my gosh, I'm so good at it or anything like that but you know we've been seeing patients throughout our clinical year of PA school and then now into actually being a PA uh, you're just kind of seeing patients more and it all depends on the type of job that you have like how you're gonna actually work that whole HPI thing out um, and get all of the information the pertinent information for your patient but um, that is one thing that I've been getting a little bit more used to um, my hospital is not like super COVID overrun like it used Used to be which is cool so it's not that we're lax or anything like that in terms of the the restrictions that we have in the hospital with respect to covid however it's a lot nicer not having to go to a covid floor which is cool because that's what i was doing like early on in my in my pa career there were several covid floors and we had patients on all of them so uh, a little bit nerve-wracking but um, as cases are spiking up, I would probably assume that we're gonna start getting a lot more cases. Um, a good thing, or like, I guess maybe not so good, I don't know. So it's like good that people are asymptomatic, um, but not so good at the same time because then they can spread the virus to others. But I, I do see a lot of patients that come in to the, the trauma bay as traumas, like motor vehicle accidents and various things like that. And to be on the floor, you have to have a COVID test. So we cannot transfer you to the floor unless you have a COVID test because that determines where in a hospital you are going. So a lot of people come in, their traumas, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, you have COVID, but they're like stone cold, normal, like asymptomatic. So that's been th something that's been happening, but I haven't really been seeing like really sick COVID patients, which is great. Um, other than that, you know, I have been going to the OR, so I've, I've had to go to the OR a couple of times with some of my attendings because um, at night, you know, I work a 24 hour shift and typically we may have residents throughout the day that would go to the OR because they need to get like their surgeries in and get practice because um, this is gonna be their job. Um, but at night, we don't always have a resident that is on call with us. And so with that being said, what that means is that we, me, <laughs> whoever is on, has to go to the OR with the attending. And so um, there is where like I, like I'm good with, you know, 
suturing and things like that like I, I think I do pretty well with that but like being in the OR you guys is like a whole nother beast right so I feel like I'm not as useful as I could be and I mean obviously that's just because I don't have enough experience in the OR but um, I definitely want to get more experience so that I'm helpful. You know, you want to be you want to be worthwhile or helpful or useful in whatever job, whatever job you go to. And so for me, um that's one thing that I'm definitely going to work on. Uh they are actually going to give us a little bit of training and um one of my attendings like told me about this book that I could uh order on Amazon to just kind of see like how you know what certain surgeries are or what certain like maneuvers are and procedures are so i'm really excited about kind of like delving into that and just learning a little bit more because the more knowledge i know the more valuable i am um as a pa especially in the or so um but yeah you know there's a lot of like retracting suction this um definitely uh suturing i have this one attending who is amazing he's amazing you guys and he is like the best teacher ever and he always asks if I want to go to the OR with him um, and this is not even always for like his recent most trauma cases that came in but trauma cases that may have came in like this shift before mine or something but the case was bumped to the shift that I'm on and so he'll ask me if I want to go and I mean of course I want to go and sometimes I don't always I'm not always able to go just because we have a lot of traumas that are coming in or I have a lot of floor work to do but I get to go and he's like amazing guys. He lets you do a lot, a lot, okay, in the OR. Um, and, and I learn a lot. So I'm excited about that. Um, apart from that, what else has been happening? I mean, you know, like I've just been enjoying my schedule. So I've been having like weeks off, you guys, you know, because I told you I only have to work um, three days in a two week period. So there are times when I literally have like eight days off or 10 days off it's crazy and that and those shifts are typically when i'm like back to back to back um but honestly like i love it because i get to spend so much time with my family i get to see my kids grow up um i am homeschooling them right now which is like a whole nother like beast in and of itself being like teacher mom um but i'm not trying to have them go into like in-person school right now so that's fine um but you know i'm homeschooling them and i have the opportunity to do that um i really am a little sad because i was ex like i was excited about being able to travel and just kind of do more stuff like outdoorsy and things like that with my schedule and you know being able to like afford it now as a pa um but i haven't really been able to do that because of covid so um that has kind of put a damper on things like the only time i really get to get out of sweats or scrubs is when I'm making these videos for you guys. And I dress up with like no place to go, but you know, I make these videos for you guys and um, I have a, a nice shirt on and we can be about our business. So um, I'm really, ex I'm really looking forward to what is going to happen like in the future. Hopefully like things are a little bit lax. I don't know with cases um, increasing if that's going to be a possibility, but whatever uh there are times you guys where it's just like you're so in inundated with stuff where you're like up all night like fielding calls or taking vascular consults or you know seeing patients or maybe a patient is bleeding from like an ostomy site and you know it's like what the freak is going on and so you feel like a little bit overwhelmed but it's really cool that you're you're able to like call on your colleagues and be like hey like i i don't know what to do like or like i haven't seen this before like what should i do um and you you know you call your attendings like our attendings are pretty responsive and i guess it's just because it's the nature of the beast is what the type of job that they have being um you know acute care surgeons um and like having that critical care mind but uh it's cool it's interesting it's scary at times but um nerve-wracking at times but actually a pretty good learning experience so i've been dealing with a lot of that kind of stuff but ultimately like i'm getting the hang of it i'm still much a baby pa you guys so i still have a whole lot to learn and by no means do i think like i know everything that there is to know in acute care surgery i'm literally like eight months 
months into this, people spend years, okay, years doing this, um, learning this, uh, this specialty. Uh, so obviously I have a lot more learning to do, but I am like, I'm actually like feeling a little bit more comfortable in my skin. Um, I don't know if a year from now, uh, I'll be, be like, oh yeah, like I got this or, or what, but you know, we'll see. And I'm still like, you know, looking to see, um, what, what other areas I can like just get some knowledge in and get some wealth in. I've been doing a lot of chest tubes, so putting a lot of chest tubes in, um, you know, put a couple lines in. I haven't really put a lot of central lines in, so that is something that I'm going to do. I'm going to like talk to some of the ICU PAs and be like, hey, if you have any uh, lines that you need to put in, can you call me? Um, and that's really the beauty of being in like a hospital system and then also like having um, APPs in that system that you can just be like, yo, you know, like I need to get these lines so I can get my advanced practice skills up. Um, do you mind calling me? Because they do lines all day, every day. So, you know, to give me one or two lines is nothing. So I'm excited, you guys. Oh, obviously like this, this update is just to tell you guys like how I've been doing, um, what I'm excited about. Uh, obviously, you know, just kind of still working through this whole 2020 year and seeing how things will go but i am hopeful for the future so um if you get nothing from this please get like be hopeful for the future you know your journey may not be easy but it will be worth it you guys like i always say this like at the end of this all like all those tears that you may have cried over exams or all the stressful like no sleep nights that you may be having you know just know that you will be okay that things get better uh, that there's a light at the end of the tunnel all those good feel good cliches it pertains to you and your studying and this year right so thank you guys so much for watching if you have any questions or comments for me please leave them in the comment section below um, also if you haven't heard like your girl you know, we started a new platform called Get That to University. So if you're serious about getting into PA school or getting through PA school, if you're a PA student, go on over to getthatstouniversity.com right now and sign up to be a part of the platform. Um, follow me on Instagram at PA. And thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!